is this? It's Chris. Why won't you believe me? Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemesis. And today we're going to talk about the thing that I know you guys wanted me to talk about in the previous two episodes, uh, but I want to get that casting information out there real quick. Uh, but this episode is going to be the one where we talk about the release date for Resident Evil, which is going to be September 3rd, 2021. And that was confirmed by Deadline. Uh, they posted an article about it. We also have a, a from Slash Film. They posted an article about it. We have uh, Cineblend. You know, I'm clicking through all the articles here. Uh, we have Cineblend. We had Com uh, Coming Soon uh, also posted about it. And Bloody Disgusting posted about it. And to even confirm it further, uh, Robbie Amell retweeted uh, Discussing Films who they uh, tweeted about it, and they tweeted an article saying it was coming out September 3rd based off of the Deadline article and everything else. And, uh, and he retweeted it and said, yeah, it's probably too soon to say it's officially coming out, but that's what we're planning is for September, so let's hope it happens. Uh, he said something akin to that, you know, um, paraphrasing, of course. So, uh, yes, I hope it does happen too. September is not that far away. Um, and I know some people are like, oh, they're rushing this. Like, when did it stop filming? It just stopped filming, like, in December. Um, this is pretty standard for a lot of movies, especially Sony. They pump out movies really quickly. It's a machine, it's a business, it happens. When they finish filming a movie, they wanna edit it and get it done as fast as they can and get it out as fast as they can because it reduces chances of leaks. I mean, obviously Sony has been hacked before. There's been a lot of problems that studios have with stuff like that. So it's a different world and a different time and they wanna get that stuff out. But now we also have COVID on top of everything. So with all these movies having been postponed because Sony is very adamant about not releasing movies in theaters that um, that they have com you know complete control over or that have, they have a bigger say in it they don't want to release them in theaters because they think they're just going to lose a ton of money which they probably will especially big franchises like venom um, and then franchises they're trying to build like morbius resident evil is an interesting one resident evil was a previously successful franchise though it did you know those last two movies were in my opinion very very bad and uh, and although i don't like the first four movies that much either there's things in there i find redeemable or at least the things you know things i like in them i should say of course it's just my opinion but uh but the fifth and sixth ones were just messes like from an editing standpoint writing standpoint like they're they're not good movies in any way and they just copy off like Paul Anderson uh, really ramps up his uh, his uh, his thing where he just copies other films. He really ramps them up big time in the fifth and sixth movies. So we'll talk about those on my commentary track because I've already recorded the Afterlife commentary track and I'll get that up probably next week to you guys. Um, so I'll get to Retribution and Final Chapter later. Um, but for this, you know, like Res Evil is an, another reason why it's an interesting spot is because Screen Gems has, you know, uh, distribution rights kind of to it uh, in uh, domestically, I believe, and and as, is also a part of it um, because you know Constantin Films owns the uh, rights to Resident Evil, and they're the ones who made this. And I think they also did Monster Hunter and through Screen Gems as well. So Monster Hunter was released theatrically. That was one of those Sony movies that slipped through the cracks, and they put out there to test the waters. I feel, and it didn't do very good. I don't think that's fully to blame to COVID. I think that movie looked like a mess anyway, and it had a really bad word of mouth, apparently, in other countries. So I'm sure it would have made a little bit more money here in the States uh, if if the world was normal or, you know, uh, per se. But um, but I, I don't think it would have made a ton of money because it looked really bad, in my opinion. And so, uh, so it, but it still was released. So Resident Evil here is through Screen Gems and Constantin Films and also Sony. Maybe it could still stick to this release date. So I'm curious what you guys think. Like, I think they pick September 3rd because it makes sense to release it. It's like seven months away, right? So you have time, six, seven months away. You have time between now and then to, um, one, get it edited and get it ready to go. Um, and two, that hopefully the world is bouncing back by then. Hopefully people are going back out to do things they used to do. Like, I mean, me, I'm not a theater guy. So if this movie came to, you know, Netflix or something, I, I would be A-OK -okay with that. <laughs> you know, I'll be totally happy with that. Or if they just released it straight to Blu-ray and I could just buy it. Like any form it came out in, I would, you know, go see it outside of a movie theater. But if it's going to theaters, you know, depending on how things are, I may go see it at the theater because it's Resident Evil and I see that I'm really invested in this now. Like I've done so many episodes on the, the making of the movie now, I feel very invested. <laughs> so I kind of want to go see how it turns out, obviously. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about this. September 3rd, you know, Deadline, Robbie Amell, everyone was talking about this. It seems, you know, like this is the official release date and hopefully they stick to it. And hopefully they're able to stick to it um, is, is the big thing. So let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. I have one more episode I'm going to record tonight. Uh, there's actually an actress in this movie that has a, a skill and talent um, in something 
that also her video game counterpart has as well. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about that in the next episode. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. This is going to be a fun video, nothing mind-blowing too much, although her skills are quite impressive, and I think I might have a new theme song for this show. So we'll talk about that in the next episode. See you then. Peace.